Welcome back to MSI 2024. I'm here with Razork for the interview. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. How do you feel about having a clean start to the tournament? Uh, it feels good to start 2-0. Uh, I mean, I feel like our gameplay could have been cleaner. We kind of trolled a little bit, but yeah, feels good to start 2-0. I'm looking forward to the next opponent tomorrow. I think clean 2-0 start is a really good sign for Fnatic as well, considering the opponent was GAM, especially a very aggressive team from VCS, and they're very well known for always creating upsets. So what did Fnatic focus on the most in order to prevent that from happening? Uh, well, I'm personally, myself, I knew that the Levi was really aggressive jungler, and he really likes to invade a lot. So I was always like aware of when he could invade, so I think I actually managed that pretty well. I prevented that the first game... With the Vi pretty decent, I think. And the second game when he played Brand, I mean, we didn't really expect them to pick Brand, but we know he is like really carry shining jungler. But I don't think he had too much impact in the game, or we kind of neutralized him good because we did uh, adapt good with the lane swap. Speaking of Brand, how did Fnatic players react to the Brand Vagar comp? I mean, Brand is more normal, I think. But I mean, Vagar, I don't really see it much. Uh, I was like really. old like a really big brand player and i really like him a lot and um, so i know how to play against him and counter him but the vegar was kind of surprising for us but i don't think it did much honestly uh did noah and john also feel a lot of flustered to deal with vegar support or no i mean they really didn't lane against him no oh, it yeah. was like kind of lane swap so i mean it's just a, a, a stun cage later on in team fights and he was not very useful in my opinion Speaking of lane swap, so lane swap has officially become a meta right now. As a jungler, do you like it or dislike it? Uh, I like it. Why? I think um, it gives some spiciness for the game. I personally feel like uh, you kind of lose the jungler um, surprise factor or of like, oh, all laners have to be aware of where enemy jungler is because in lane swaps... Like, there is one side of the map that is for one team and the other one is for the other team. And it's like, who takes place faster and who dives enemy top? So the one that is getting annoyed is the top laner, kind of, that he's level one, level two at minute five. And yeah, me personally as a jungler, I think it's fine because I get kind of assist and kills early on top laners. A lot of actions, which is yep. fun, right? Yep. And I think uh, you and Humanity especially were able to pop off throughout the series today. So do you think all the players are now fully kind of warmed up and adapted to the new stage? How are the players feeling? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Humanity played good. I think I played pretty decent too. And uh, I mean, personally, I am really happy for June because it's like his first international game. You know, he didn't play at Wars or MSI once. So he was a little bit nervous. He told me before the game. So, I mean, I hope this win makes him feel more comfortable, even though I think he played pretty good. It makes him more comfortable so he can play better next games. Amazing. Thank you so much, Razor, Thank for you. the interview and wish you the, wish you the best of luck in the upcoming matches. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. Amazing hearing from El Cachorro de la Jungla, as we call him <laughs> in Europe, Razork. Popping off as the rest of Fnatic here in this series. Uh, let's talk a bit about the second game because it feels like they cleaned up their gameplay and I don't know, for me, they passed second gear here against Gam. Yeah, yeah, and I think for me, it was about... <sighs> Fnatic yeah. played really solid. Played really solid and Gam were playing way too over aggressive yeah. Um, yeah. and basically being caught off guard, specifically Emo had quite a poor game there. So uh, I, I really did like, to your point, that Fnatic cleaned it up just a bit. Yeah, and I mean, they responded to the lane swap really well, right? Like, we were talking about how Gamma are in kind of a tough position. You want them to lane swap, but then obviously Fnatic responded really well. And fun fact now, uh, after this series, yeah. that the entire series had about a 1.3 combined kills per minute. Fnatic game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like it was, it was 1.57 in yeah. that last game we just watched. We see Disgusting. that man uh, on stage behind us, of course, we're going to talk about the second series right after that, but Humanoid popping off left and right in that last game, especially on the mid, let me tell you. Yeah, and we've talked about how much of a like staple he's been yeah. in Europe as an EU mid. He's kind of such a great pivot point for this Fnatic team, and I thought, especially in the second game, but also even in the first game where he had a lot of really good roams from mid as well, um, he communicated Communicates with the rest of the lanes, and I thought, I mean, he just played out of his mind today. Amazing, okay. amazing here from Fnatic. They advance to the next round. We will see Gamma later, though, but let's move on to the next series we have on our hands today Loud versus TS. And here, 
they play on home turf, and we have <laughs> the biggest stars we could see in the LPL, Jackie Love and Mako. They're hugely popular. Yeah, China. just throughout their careers, the fans have been pretty rabid. No matter what team they've been on, they followed them. Yep. So it's it's great to be able to see them at the level they are. The fans being as rabid this. as they are, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny too, for years now, anytime they've won a game on stage, they've always had fans kind of give them gifts or anything mm -hmm. like that. Oh, so cute. Have a word of support for the players. It's always been heartfelt and they've <laughs> always followed them. I remember, anytime there's an international event, remind me of New York and Worlds, the fans were incredibly yep. loud, yeah. traveled from yeah. China to be able to see their favorite players. Look at this. Yeah. And I mean, it's really hard to communicate to the international audience who doesn't see them like as frequently in China, just how popular these two players all are, and also just how popular this bot lane is as a whole, right? Because throughout his entire career, Mako, obviously, he was on that EDG lineup that won in 2015. This is his first time back to MSI since. Um, and then partnering with Jackie Love, who people were like, please get him a, support, him <laughs> a top level support. Um, and obviously he did win in 2018 with Alan at Worlds, but people were so, so excited for this TES bot lane with Mako coming over from EDG for the first time in his career. Yeah, and it's just been, it's great to see it because they've been playing towards bot side quite heavily and like allowing them to be as, as aggressive as possible. So that has been great. And I think that's allowed 369 to be as versatile as he has always been. He's been a great carry player. He's always had, um, you know, the tank options there for himself. Mm -hmm. And he's just been as good as usual. I think you've said that he's one of the best top laners in the world. I still think he is one of the best there top laners is. in the world, actually. Um, and consistent but I, as well. I'll push back a little bit because I think in early on in his career, like yes. I remember seeing him first in like, I think 2017 Demacia Cup, right? Mm -hmm. um, he was that kind of player who was like, Really, really aggressive, playing for the lane matchup. Didn't have as good of an understanding of tanks. And I think the way that he's evolved, especially with his champ pool uh, and his frontlining in team fights, is just so incredible and really remarkable when we think about how many top laners come into the LPL and can play the 1v1 really well, but maybe not have the tank pool and the wherewithal in team fights. And he developed that within when he was on JDG. Yep. And so that's where people have really saw him to be a lot more of a well-rounded top laner. So the whole meme that he had of 369, yeah. what dice roll are you going to get, to me is no longer relevant. <laughs> it's just always, to me, very solid. So this is a the scariest team to face. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. I remember 369 last year, the expectations were high already when it comes to international stage. Yeah. How can we reevaluate this this year? What can we expect from 369 and how do you rate his evolution in the first split we saw in the LPL? Well, Ooh. sadly, we're in the lane swap meta, so I think he's yeah. going to be going towards more tanks. And I think that's not a bad thing. He's a very, he's a yeah. quite a, a smart player. Um, so I think he's going to be going towards, honestly, more Cassante play. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's going to be quite good for him. Well, to that point, though, I think one of the things that I'd really like encourage people to watch out for with 369 is his team fighting, right? And yes. specifically his team fight targeting, especially if he is on a tank and frontlining. Like, in particular, we've called this out, but his Orn is absolutely stellar. Yes. Right. So um, the, if you, you know, maybe they won't be playing the lane depending on if there is a lane swap, but then you look out for his team fight targeting. And they're going to be going up against Loud. So really tough competition for Loud to be going up against yeah. top esports with mm -hmm. really it felt like an only a week and a half of preparation because they were the latest team to finish their finals. Sure, TS did, but I mean, they're literally in China, so not much of a travel <laughs> time for them. Yeah, and what a final has been for them. Four pits here, championship yep. win on the side of Loud. Maybe the most successful team we have on the side of the Brazil region. What can we expect from this? We know them. They used to the international stage. They come here for the huge success, and they want to give the best they have here, obviously against TS. Yeah, and I mean, coming into this year, if you watched Loud previously, the big change is that Seus left and went yeah. back to Kaboom. Redbert signed on, was not a popular pickup in Probably Brazil. still isn't. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think for this team, A, you are looking at that top side. Specifically, Robo, just with this past win, became the winningest player in CBLOL, um, which is with seven titles, which is just absolutely massive. And like you said, Laura, they are on their fourth straight uh, title. And I think 
the big thing that this team does like to do, and specifically if you've seen Robo domestically or international events, he definitely does love to style on his yes, opponents. He, yeah. he loves to bring out, obviously, we. I think people most know him for bringing out the Darius in top lane uh, previously. Um, but he'll obviously go for a lot of those lane matchups. So I am curious to see where, if we see a lane swap, where that swap's going to come from. Yeah, and we're talking about accolades and personality. That's Robo. We're talking about just, like, the best player on the map for this team. It's Tinones. Tinones has had an incredible year talking mm -hmm. to regional representatives mm -hmm. and just watching the games. It's been very clear that he has been on his game. No. That, it's funny, that four peep wasn't an easy one. That was a really so, difficult best yeah. of five that they had versus Pain. So it's been really difficult for them. And they have talked about how it's really now kind of been on uh, Tinones alongside Croc to really play out the the, the mm -hmm. mid scale, the, the mid portions of the game well. Uh, so they've changed around how they've communicated, communicated within the game. But a lot of the onus of carrying the games, I think, is going to be on the shoulders of Tinones. Yeah, and I agree with that. And I also think the big thing, and Kind of the unfortunate thing is like looking at this loud roster, right? Yeah. In Brazil specifically, they do have the best understanding of like side wave management, yes. right? And like map control, more more so than their opponents. Some of it kind of regressed a little bit with Sayus leaving, but like for the most part, that is their strength. And now they're going up against TES. And one thing I do want to bring up about TES, because we didn't necessarily see this from them in the LPL finals, but across the season, I actually thought their, their early to mid-game lane assignments were really, really smart. Like, mm -hmm. this is an incredibly smart team, uh, and I don't want their lackluster finals performance to kind of take away from that as a strength. I want to shed some help here because we saw the series S12 versus T1 yesterday. S12 yeah. exceeded expectations, I feel. And I remember Latin America, CBLOL, and LLA included surprised everyone last year at MSI. Do you think we can see a surprise on the side of Loud today? And where would it be coming from? Well, my first immediate response <laughs> is hell no. <laughs> I'm pretty pessimistic on this one. But if, if you're asking me where it's going to be coming from, I think we haven't mentioned Root. Who's yeah. always been like last event? He yeah. was their better player. He mm -hmm. was their best player. And if you put resources into him, as you can already see our predictions, it's just straight two O's. Sorry. Yeah. But it's going to be a route that if he has a solid game versus Jackalove, maybe it's competitive. Um, but it's going to be a really tough competition. Mm -hmm. I think you rely on TES to make a lot of mistakes. True. Maybe uh, this is Tien's bad game. Yeah. <laughs> it could no. be. Poor Tien. Has maybe he, he throws has it. He suffered enough for us. No, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Maybe this oh, game. Oh, man. No. Raz, this ha Raz hates TN. I don't. Nah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> no. Uh, but I think, like, that is, if you're if you're looking at this TES team, they do make mistakes in the LPL, right? Like, at most recently in the finals, we did see from them um, some, some lackluster gameplay a little bit. I, I do think it's going to be really, really hard, though. Yeah. They're playing from home. They have the fans behind them as well, of course. Uh, Loud is, uh, also has fans behind them as they come here, usually to support their team. We'll see how things unfold here at MSI for the second series. TES is about to be ready on stage, facing off against Loud. Let's meet the team right away. All right. I believe that you wanted to meet the teams. Instead, you will meet me and Dagda. We're the teams. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, we'll never do that to you, I promise. This is a professional esports broadcast. You'll never have to watch us play League of Legends. We are moments away from the team introductions kicking off. Gives us a chance to talk a little bit more about the matchup. And personally, I think the games today, and it was kind of also expected yesterday, these are going to be the most one-sided games of the tournament. That said, I am really excited to watch Loud to see what they can bring to the table. And also excited to see if like top esports are going to be able to play with such confidence, to play with such dominance that they can kind of upset expectations. Because while this series may not change a lot when it comes to public perception, this is the team that pretty much universally rated by everybody. Of all of the LCK and LPL representatives, people have the lowest. Which, when you look at the names on this team, they're not going to be happy about being ranked fourth. <laughs> Mako, Jackie Love, too. Like, it's a star-studded roster. Yeah, I think it's hard for top esports because they're trying to shift a lot of that international perspective of them. When you look back at like World 2022 when they lost towards GAM, and that kind of shifted a lot of the perspective away from you know Jackie Love, who at that 
point in time was kind of a bit inconsistent. He was considered a coin flip player, but over the last two years since then, has definitely become significantly more solid, wants to step up and be the big carry, and alongside having Mako, which feels like he's had this uh, resurgence with just finally having an incredibly strong, like one of the top LPL supports beside him, has been sick to see. So I think top esports definitely going to show a lot of people how strong they have been over the course of LPL. And that does mean that for the CB LOL, it's going to be a tough showing because one of the big things that we saw for Loud is, yeah, their solo laners are kind of the big call-out spots. Like you look at Robo, the top half of the map, but the bottom side has been kind of the dodgy point for them. So when you're looking at going up against Jackie Love and Mako, it feels like a huge amount of this game has to be about controlling the duo that is on top esports. Which is a tall task for, I think, most teams in this tournament. I would say just about any team in this tournament. The only bot lane who I think is just clearly better right now is Elkanon, right? And they're, for many people, the favorites of the tournament alongside Genji. So we'll have to see if CB Law can engineer a way, if they can find a draft or a setup that will allow them to get around this. Now, again, I think Emily's brought it up before. This is the moment where we start to ask, are lane swaps going to be introduced? For my personal enjoyment, I would say, you know, not my favorite thing. But I, from a tactical approach, again, you would respect it because it would get them away from what could be a very explosive, very catastrophic 2v2. But the problem is it takes you away from what makes Loud strong. True. Like when you look at them domestically, it's playing through Tinones, playing through Robo. They're going to look for early Rift Heralds, try and snowball through their side lane play. And I mean, even from some of the interviews that we've seen talking about them in the CB lot, it was this is the team that is the best at macro, the best at understanding side lanes. So if you maybe want to lean into that, sure, you can try and play for some of these lane swaps. But it does seem like it's a difficult task when so much of your gameplay relies on Robo in particular, alongside Tinones being ahead, you're going to remove that aspect from your mid game because Ro Robo by default will be so far behind. I mean, it is a nigh impossible puzzle to solve, exactly. right? It's why it is so heavily in favor of top. When we talk about this, we are about two minutes away from team introductions. And of course, after that, champ select. So bear with us for a brief moment. And I think for CB Law, right, it is like this huge opportunity for a massive upset, the opportunity to show what you're about on the stage. I don't want to count them out immediately, right? Yep. Just assume they're dropping down and that they're going to be playing up against Gam later. You know, would be a reasonable prediction, but let's just see what they can do. Let's see how hard they can hit. I think the other person that we have to keep our eye on across the tournament, as top fans will know, as international fans will know, you know, Tien, a guy who in this series you expect him to dominate, but as the tournament goes on, we really want to see that consistency in form because if he's playing at an incredibly high level, it feels to me to a certain degree like he has the power to single-handedly elevate top esports in people's minds because he is in the best and worst possible way for top esports, like their X Factor. He's a god when he's in great form, and oftentimes, you know, the team falls apart when he's having a really rough game. Yeah, I think that's kind of the thing, is that when Tien's on form, he looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, World Finals MVP, like, won the title for FPX. Yeah. But the problem is, is that he has come out in interviews and said, look, I do struggle with confidence. I do struggle when it comes towards, can I consistently build myself up when it's been a tough matchup? Now, I think on top esports, he's had to take less of the starring role because you have laners that are so strong individually. Like, you've got 369. A lot of people tell him he's the best top lane in the world coming into this. Styled, well, not styled, but one lane against Bin, I will say, in uh, in the finals, but still end up losing the game. You know, got Jackie Love and Mako, who are the 2v2 killers in that bottom lane in the LPL. So I think it's where Tien has to take less of a forefront and a presence yeah. in the game and kind of just has to play a supporting role, which I think in this sort of situation works out well, because when you think back to when he won Worlds in FPX, it was like Doombie being able to set him up and work with him in that pairing. So I think strong laners is definitely something that suits Tien and why top esports were so competitive with BLG for nearly taking the number one spot in the LPL. I think you're completely correct. And I think one of the other advantages, right, you have such a massive home crowd advantage. Uh, I don't know if you can always see it when you're looking at the cameras of the overall venue, but the second that an LPL team it's is about to play, builds up chance double triple in volume and until you're in a best of five against another lpl team you're the fan favorite baby you've got all that support <laughs> behind you so you're the fan favorite for the rest of stage one and for a decent chunk of stage two depending on if they drop blg or not i was talking to some of the chinese fans that are here though uh, like jess who awesome messages with info on uh, twitter and that but it was really funny because he was like the sigh of relief 
from a lot of the Chinese fans when Gam and Top were pulled on opposite sides, so they potentially wouldn't fix off because our world was apparently fantastic. But they were like, do we want to let Top get the revenge or do we want to just avoid Gam altogether? Well, we'll find out if um, Loud can maybe send them down to play against Gam, but uh, it is very, very I funny can't to see knock it's still it. there. As an EU yeah. pundit, being scared of the VCS comes very naturally to me. We will not forget what Ruffalo... Mark Ruffalo Mark and the Ruffalo Buffaloes the did to us yes, yes. <laughs> G2 many years ago. We have been embarrassed many times at the hands of the VCS. So, and that we are brothers, LPL fans. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, we'll see. Again, we're. It seems like player intros are right around the corner, and I mean, I frankly just cannot wait to get into our next best of three. This is going to be an absolute banger. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what Cream is going to bring out in the mid lane because this is a guy meta. that was like. If the meta shifts in towards the Silas's, the Akali's, the Yone's, this kind of stuff, this man's going to have a fantastic time. But he didn't look too good. Like when Karma got dropped out of meta, he kind of just fell off. It was like, oh, I'm not having the best of times. I here. want that for everyone, not I just know. for Cream. <laughs> like, the problem no with lane, lane swaps. swaps is it's like no Assassin's one's. Most mid. people aren't going mid, so it's just even more reason to just play control mages and chill. Like, bring me back to the Silas's, the Akali's. Let Cream lead the way for all of the meta. <laughs> That's my only request. Top. Be That's all I want. Be Zeka. <laughs> Just break the meta. Play your own style. Or you can be Cream, yeah. but play the stuff Zeka played. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a compromise. No, but I'm, I'm very excited. I think uh, to see what top esports are able to bring out and what style they've decided on the game looks like for them. But then also going up against like Robo and Tinones, I think this is a big opportunity for them to prove their worth against what are some of the best laners that we have coming in, especially if Cream starts to fall back towards his own style. Now look, obviously he struggled a little bit with the meta that was coming in towards playoffs, but he's still a very, very strong player in his own right. So I'm excited to see how these two teams face up against each other. Certainly. And I think tracking the mid lane meta is going to be important, especially for the LPL, right? People talk a lot about Knight. He has champions that he's incredible on. Not a guy who's known Sorry, for his ear. <laughs> you know, he's a big champion in the meta. Um, and we'll see if Cream is able to slot back into what we look at as his comfort zone. But now, I think we're about ready for team intros. So let's get into it. It's time to meet our next two teams. Esports登場 
of Esports 对阵 Loud， 比赛即将开始，让我们共同期待两支战队的精彩表现。Ten ounce jersey on. They're face, always here. I don't even know where we buy face paint in this country, Rob. This man figured it out. This man overcame a language barrier to show up here today and support his team. You gotta respect that. <laughs> Versus those who are just like dungy shot as we desperately try yeah. to Google Translate. If I can't screenshot it and Google Translate it, I'm not interacting with it. That's that's the rule for me. That said, I'm ready to get in this one, man. I'm so excited. You could hear. All of Chengdu excited for top esports. Loud fans here, always impressive. Always have a showing at international tournament. Love the passion from this fan base. Hopefully, it's well rewarded today. But obviously, uphill battle. We've talked about it from just about every angle. And now draft meta. That's the thing I'm most excited for in some of these early tournament games. You know, we talk about it at Worlds plans a lot, especially there. Champions who show up in the first few series and the first few games never to be seen again. Things like Echo Jungle in years past, but maybe this time you get a little spice from the loud side, maybe a little spice from the top side. Indicator of what's to come in the later stages of the tournament. But that's just me being hopeful. I imagine it will be pretty similar to what we've seen in the last few series, but maybe some yeah. more Urgot games. I don't know. I am always curious because, like, it feels like when we get to the two different stages, there's only two different styles of meta, but we'll have to see as we're already moving into things here. Yep. And our champions like powered by Omen and HyperX. Already seeing a lot of topside focus. 369. <laughs> Banning out Robo. That's the kind of respect we like to see. That said, I would have preferred the disrespect. Let him have his comfort and see how you can handle him at his strongest. But I understand it. Robo's the Saitama of the CB law. You don't want to give him any of his signature picks. 369, I get it. I respect it. Yeah, it also feels like Leonard kind of targeting the top esports with their own signature picks as well. Cream has been really good on the Ari over the course of this split. It's the second most played, but realistically, I really like him on the Aries and the, uh, not the Aries, sorry, the Salias, because I think in reality, the way top esports want to try and play it is through the side lanes in nine times out of 10 and shifting around the map when it gets to the mid game. So trying to remove some of that comfort for the moment and set up, hopefully, Tinones for a nice matchup in that mid lane against Cream. What will the first pick bring? What did TS want to prioritize here? Varus is up and available. We talked a lot about Jackie Love on Varus, Rob, and how just it enables a lot of the you know, playing through mid strategies that TES like to leverage pretty heavily, putting a lot of prio on the on the mid lane champions, or sorry, the bot lane champions who can always push. But yeah. the Senna, interestingly enough, not historically uh, what many people who haven't been keeping up with the LPL would call a Jackie Love champion, but I feel like his repertoire has grown pretty significantly in the last few years. Yeah, it kind of feels like what we've seen a lot of top esports is first pick Varus or first pick Nautilus and just being like, oh, we're going to dominate the 2v2. It's felt more when they're put into a pinch on red side or where they're not really sure what exactly they're going up against or they want to try and neutralize the matchup they'll go for the Senna. I expect them to try and go for the more aggressive bot lane matchup here but gonna take the Senna I imagine it'll be the time cage for Mako alongside it as you've seen it from them before but not what I was expecting coming into this as you say like a lot of top lane focus bans and then not opting for a more aggressive bot side. Yeah it is quite interesting. Now, one thing I will say is if you do go for a pairing like the Senna Tom Kench, one of their weaknesses historically is they push very slowly, especially pre bombing Cinder if the Tom Kench is the one farming. So if we are in a lane swap scenario, the, the Tom Kench Senna very likely to struggle to actually take turret plates early on. I do feel like, though, if you're going to take... If you're going to go for the, the lane swaps, you're not going to take the Nautilus, right? So I think that's kind of where we're realistically at. The Talia going to be taken away as well. Azir obviously getting nerfs coming into this patch, but with the uh, Varus coming out as well, I kind of like what Loud have uh, set up here. You should be able to get decent control for Tin Owns in that mid lane. Yeah, this gives you a, a nice matchup in that bottom side that you can just play for push. And then when you get into the mid uh, game, you can actually try and play outside lanes, which is where Loud have been best in the CB law. So it definitely feels like comfort for Loud when you look at what that composition, this composition is going to bring to the table. Yeah, I also like, you know, getting yourself to Talia early on, like you talked about playing towards side lanes, giving yourself that little extra bit of mobility. Varus, Nautilus, obviously notoriously powerful laning duo. 
And right now, it feels like TES have a very powerful draft, but it's pretty conservative, right? You've got a Tom Kench who probably doesn't need to devour the Senna as much if she's not farming. Instead, can focus on keeping Cream alive. Your team fighting's gonna be good. You got good protection. You got good scaling. But it's not its not really explosive. We're gonna need to see what the jungle option looks like, what top lane looks like for 369, before we get the full picture of what TES are trying to do here. I mean, you could end up seeing 369 go back towards it, like the Camille and that, the got the, the buff. A lot of people kind of look at 369 over the last couple of years and are like, oh yeah, he's the, the tank role player, right? But if you go back to when 369 was on top esports in 2020, he didn't know what a tank looked like. He had never seen the thing, didn't understand what the champions were supposed to do. He was like, I play Jakes, I play carries, I mess you up in a side lane. This is all I'd want to do. So you can definitely fall back towards that style, but it will be a question of whether top esports are willing to play that style coming in. But if there is a... a a composition to do it with it is definitely when you've got like a Senna and a Tan Kench and you know support and ease of access for the front line with your back line. There. Yeah. The other big thing I think we're waiting to see from the top esports side is reliable engage options. Right? They certainly don't need to play it, it just makes the game a little bit easier. The Lee Sen taking away Pian. I mean, if you don't know about this, you've missed Worlds videos <laughs> where he's literally animated as this champion. So, uh, catch up. That'd be my only thing. And then, uh, you know, also going to see the Zen taken away. So trying to make sure at least limit some of Loud's early snowballing options. You've still got things like the uh, the Sejuani, though, that he can go back towards the Va I'm sorry, the Maokai even. There's still options there for him. I don't think he'll go for something a little bit more aggressive. Like I was going to say, with Zin Zhao taken away, I feel like trying to go towards like a Viego or something along these lines isn't really the best option because you don't have full control over bot side. You're going to be blind picking your top lane as well. So in theory, you should have nice opportunities to counter pick there for loud. So I think he will just fall back towards, you know, your variable space, but since you want to banned by them as well. So ooh, who knows, maybe some outcry angle. All right. This is, okay, they're gonna opt for the Renekton here. It's gonna be an Ergot angle, isn't it? I feel like it has to be. Yeah. And this is, you would normally assume in this circumstance in draft that you would save last pick for for top lane, right? Jungle pool is generally not nearly as much about having the counter pick, which makes me think that maybe Croc has something really spicy up his sleeve. Otherwise, Renekton is just a very high prio for the side of, of Robo. And again, it is, you know, a champion he's played a few times. So we get the, the Mako spinner. So, well, I thought it was somewhere. I thought it'd be the Ergot pick here. And then there's maybe the opportunity for a Poppy pick on the opposite side. Because even though you're like not playing against Kalista, Vigo wants to dash, Azir dash, now Cassante or Ergot dash. So you do have a lot of opportunities to try and deny things here. And even when you want to try and uh, reset a fight, a lot of these members aren't particularly AA capable of diving away from the Poppy. So maybe that's the opportunity here. You just try and play for Poke with the Varus and the Talia. But no, gonna All go right, for the Kong. And this is obviously a composition that I actually really like from the side allowed. Yeah, I think so. They've got pushing bot lane. They've got a pretty solid pushing option in the mid lane. They've got, you know, Renekton who's going to be fine early game. And you've got a, a jungler who scales really well and offers more CC options. Now, Viego is a scary champion. If he ever gets a reset against this composition, he can just take over a fight. But a lot of what allowed to put together feels very good to me. On the opposite side for uh, TES, though, still some pretty strong tools. Yeah, I think the thing that I like for Loud is that this is their bread and butter, right? It's, hey, we've got a bot side that can take care of itself on this virus. He'll push out waves. We'll unlock Redbird to start playing around owns in the mid lane, play, start to work in towards both our solo laners. And you have two winning solo lane matchups. Essentially, <laughs> there's Candace, but uh, we have two, so you can actually play with the Renekton to just look for plates, especially if you get the support from the Wukong in these early stages. So honestly, I really like what Loud have brought to the table. And it's going to be on top of these forces to try, try and disrupt what is a very strong early game from this loud side. That is, of course, the draft on paper. We're going to have to see. We know Top Esports has a lot of incredibly powerful individual players. Even if they're not drafted, even if they haven't set themselves up a champion select to dominate some of these lanes, there's always the room to outplay, to outperform. But if they're on even footing, Loud certainly have a lot of tools to take over this matchup and this match. And I think that's why I'm looking at top side. Robo has to get a lead on this Renekton. You're going up against 369, who a lot of people have eyes on him for the tournament. And when it's the man that has won the most CB LOL titles, there is no better person to go up against 369. It, he's like Brazilian faker in my eyes. Yeah. Oh, Brazilians yeah. might not be happy about that. They might want to give that. There are a lot of historic dynasties in the he's CB legend. Whether it's pain, whether it's loud in this era, 
regardless. I mean, not to surpass BRTT. You to had take. to surpass. That's true. I did. Yes. Yeah. And all I'm saying is, I don't see Robo getting arm tattoos. So maybe uh, an opportunity for him to improve his Brazilian goat game. That said, a bit of early vision spotting out. Robo just hovering in the brush. Kind of expect this one to be a bit quiet. And you know what, Rob? You want to know the best news to you and the fans at home? What is it? So far, Minions has spawned. it's not too late. So, well, I mean, wait, hold on. Normal lanes. Oh, everyone breathe a sigh of relief. You can see Leod weren't certain. Because it really has a, TP. There's a TP on that Morris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I'm just, just in case. Because let's be real, Mako is always going to take TP as the time can. You see it all the time. Absolutely. So, He's, if there was some lane swaps going on, he would be able to move around the map better and just having more access to those te teleports makes it very difficult. So I do like the adaptation from Loud. And in theory, all the Root wants to do is farm up. He doesn't want to be taking a hyper aggressive trades or anything in these early stages. So um, it's it's nice. I think uh, Loud definitely coming in with a solid game plan here and a really good foundation to set themselves up for the early game we want to see. Yep. Mako and Jackie Love going for a bit aggressive bit of early trading here on the bottom side. And Mako completely unafraid here. Root really struggling to step up and get those Halo Blades auto attacks off. Some very positive trades for the TES bottom lane. Bit of a concerning sign or a worrying trend in the words of Mr. Joshua Jet Leesman. I mean, they tried to fight for the bush control level one and unfortunately they just end up coming out a little bit worse for wear in the grand scheme of things. So. The fact that you lose a bush level one means that it does make it tougher for you to try and walk up and attack this uh, bottom side. So they will get the push for Jackie Love and Mako, which is actually a big win for them. Because as we were kind of talking about, the what you want to do as loud in a lot of these situations is try and keep control over bot side to then lean in towards your both, both your solo laner. So I wasn't sure with Tien having this push for Mako and for Jackie Love on the bottom side if you wanted to look for an invade onto Croc, because the Wukong not particularly strong at these early levels. No. And the Tom Kent, while he often kind of lacks in certain circumstances. All ins, tower dives. This is one of the most oppressive yeah. early game champions. So yeah, he doesn't have a hook, and that puts him behind some other picks like Nautilus very often. But if you have to walk into melee range of this champion, you're not winning a 1v1. Dude, that one's going to trade pretty heavy against Creamy. He needs to get this wave pushed in. We're doing a good job of trying to prevent that from happening, but here's where we're talking about, right? Tien using the push that he has on the bottom side to see what he can try and get on the map. Going to sneak in onto the upside. I think this one more to get vision and play for the uh, scuttle that's about to spawn, but actually going to rotate up towards that top side, so maybe a bit unsure as to where Croc started. But they have double wards here, both in the tri brush as well as further up in the jungle to at least spot out early jungle pathing. Jackie will have three stacks of life, but they're not quite able to proc it. Tien gonna grab the crab, good overall. Redbird has overstepped here a little bit. But Croc is on the way in. They're trying to shred through this Nautilus and get the reset for Tien, but Tien's forced to back away because of the Ignite. Croc doing good damage. Again, that Wukong passive starting to stack up, but not a whole lot here on the bottom side, except for physical damage. So just a bit of a skirmish, just some warning shots fired back and forth from both sides, but it's Redbird who's incredibly low and might just be forced out of lane. He did get the Aftershock proc off right before this big tray came in, so was able to absorb quite a bit of damage through the Aftershock, and that's why you could buy time for Loud to come in, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, right, like you do get Tien going back. He would have wanted to back anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, but as you say, if Redbird has to reset, it's going to be difficult for Root to try and farm underneath this tower, especially if Mako and Jackie Love can sniff out a potential dive here, but I don't think they get the wave pushed in quick enough. No, and now they know exactly where the ward is placed. Tien immediately moves up, sweeps it out. Tenos is going to have to be careful. Now missing that piece of vision. Starting to play more towards the bottom side. Knows at least that Viego's on the top side. Croc wanting to clear out this camp, but doesn't have Smite. Luckily for him, neither does Tien. And so far, pretty quiet early game, I will say. Jackie Love already at 21 souls pretty early on. Him and Mako very much running the bottom side of the map. Might get a little bit more difficult as... Rouse has to get some items under his belt, maybe some extra movement speed to weave in and out of those trades, but right now it's been tough. Yeah, I think it'll be once he started to get the lethality items coming through for a Root, that's where it's really going to start to work in their favor. And this is what I was about to say, is getting Redbird out of this lane to look for Roams. He's already in the mid lane, and this is something that he did a lot in playoffs, and setting up Tin Owns for success, even just interrupting a reset here for Cream is massive. You don't want the kill. You just want to deny Cream access to reset. Level six for 369. Pullback is good. Gets the extra tower shot on the Robo. Robo holds on to the Dominus, crucially. Mako now going in, and oh, Root's all on his lonesome. Has to flash away. 
Center route not going to connect. And this is going to limit Redbird on the map. Has to play with Root now because with that flash down, Root is a sitting duck underneath these towers. So it means that Redbird will have to try and stay with him to make sure that Root can farm up safely. Croc is down on the spot side again, but I think he's just going to farm out, reset, and maybe look for the uh, the Void Grubs on the upside. They are pinging us, so maybe they look to trade with the play on bot end instead. Robo taking a little bit of a negative health trade there. Did match TPs here, and of course, early Bramble, not surprising to see from 369. Excellent hook from Redbird, though. Jackie Love now going to be in trouble. Good follow up damage on the Hail Arrows. Triple proc there. Redbird wants to keep this going. Tinones is on the way. They really want to try and push back top esports. So, with that, they should actually be able to turn that in towards a dragon. Robo trading heavily against 369 in the top lane. No junglers inside. This is just a 1v1. Conqueror proc. Nice sidestep on the Q3. That's so tricky. That early healing reduction makes things so much more difficult. Nice hook again onto Tien. Redbird in trouble. They just need to deny the reset. Redbird trying to live as long as possible, but now the reset comes through. It's a stolen away, but Tien owns is here to punish. One for one so far. Loud three-man advantage. Trim trying to come over the wall, ready to scoop up if he needs to be. Flashback from Mako is good. Croc walking away for now. Jackie Love just continuing to harass. And see Skirmish on the bottom side, but just one for one overall. It will end up being one for one, but there was no real reason for Top Esports to try and over contest with that. Loud were in a decent position where they were able to move over because Jackie Love had taken so much damage on the back end of it, but able to salvage it as Tien is able to get the damage on Redbird, but almost a near miss from Top Esports on the play. Yeah, the reset crucial by a bit of extra time. The level sixes are going to be big for both of these junglers. We take a look back at this one. Jackie Love hits five, but he's at half HP, so already in the 3v3. Yes, Redbird takes a lot of damage, but you do have Tin Owens able to move from mid as well, so this could have been very, very risky. And the fact that you end up burning both flashes onto the top esports bot lane is going to be terrifying, because we've already seen how aggressive they want to try and play in this bot lane. You hit six for Wukong, you immediately go into bot, and you can see how close he is, that little purple bar underneath the Wukong icon. That's how close the XP is. So but one more camp and he'll get us. True, but crucially, Mako's been left alone to farm bottom side, which means he's about to hit level six as well, which as long as he's next to that key target, it makes it so much harder for Loud to find the angle. Jackie Love roaming top. Robo double dash out is crucial, but Redbird again making his presence known in the mid lane. Flick back. Almost connects from Tinones. Forces the flash out of Cream. Nice play in mid. They're going to continue up towards top side though. Six for Croc. They want to see if they can try and punish 369 and Jackie Love. They have the numbers advantage. They just try and get the vision instead. Jackie Love looking for the reset. But as you say, like, you do have Mako with the level six, but if he's on bot side, you still have a ton of access for Wukong, and Wukong kind of gets a two for one special if he ends up knocking up Mako as well. So sure. you do have to be very, very careful in these scenarios. If you don't spot out top as top esports where Croc is, it can end terrible. Nice and stop. We'll come in for 369. Immediately goes all out. So far, just trading ulti for ulti. Robo has to be very careful about extending this trade. We'll start to stack the Fury up. The ulti going, can just heal off the wave though. 369 knows the play is over, but getting the Renekton ult definitely does not feel too bad, especially because the Ghost is going to be at back up for 369 and not too distant future. Yeah, I mean, ult for ult, but nice stun from Robo to be able to disengage away from that. Didn't know how many members were on that top side, but Redbird now, I mean, level four, quite far behind, but Root does have the level advantage. Redbird not able to connect with the hook, but again, like, you can see how well Loud are trying to move around the map. It's Redbird, or we have push on bot, cool. Redbird, show up mid, get Cream's flash. We have push in mid now because Cream can't contest the wave. Great, Tin owns, lean bot with the ultimate early open available. And if any of these hooks hit and you've got Croc in position, it's going to be lights out for top esports. And I think pretty crucial that you find that opportunity soon because Jackie Love is quietly just stacking up souls, right? Him leaving lane does not hurt nearly as much for other supports because while he might miss out on a little bit of XP, he's getting another resource that is uh, arguably equally as important we get later into the game. But Croc is here. He has been spotted out. Tien now knows that he needs to stick around. Dragon is the option. He might just try to force the 3v2 in bot lane. And Loud, I think they're not going to be able to get the prize of forcing a fight yet. Jackie Love are going to hit six. He's going to hit six off this wave, though. So they can push Loud back. They got to go now. Oh, this is going to be big. Flick back on Mako. Could do a decent amount of damage. But it's one tanky Tom Kench. Thick skin, though. Doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Mako holding as long as he can. But he finally drops. Push back is big from Cream. Croc now in trouble. Can't afford to give away the reset. But now it's Tien set up to take over. Dash forward. Leaps in with the clone. Now it's three set on the Nano. It's going to look for the hook as well. But Tin owns too far away. Push back from 369. Taking Robo under the tower. Robo double dashing out to safety. Good patience. If he had pushed any other button there, would have started taking tower aggro sooner and 
Starting to see some fights, Rob. I'm liking it. TP for Mako into that bottom side now as well. I think they want to make sure they can get the Dragon here for top esports. It was so close to being a win for Loud on the bottom side, but Cream able to come in and get just a barely a pick onto Croc and set up with Tin Owns now in the vicinity. Redbird on the way. Root did not reset. They're still looking for a play. Doesn't have a lot of mana. He's not. Flash in. Gonna try to secure the kill. Mako could again be caught out, but he's so damn tanky. Abyssal dive! Flawlessly timed! Right when they're out of CC, right when the cooldowns are down, he immediately pulls the trigger, makes it out to safety. Just about able to get out. Tien had to burn his flash to get over the wall there, make sure that he was able to get away. Root should push in this wave and look for the reset. He can TP back into lane, so didn't have to worry too much about not going for the reset, but this hit, top esports playing hyper aggressive on this bot wave because they want to hit six for Jackie Love on this bot wave. The TP for Cream immediately, and they do get a nice pick from Mako. But I think at this stage, it's you got the pick, look for Dragon, but they look for more. And Cream gets a great ult here, and Redbird tries to save him, but doesn't get the hook around the wall and ends up putting himself in harm's way to end up falling as well. So top esports coming out on top when they get the Dragon on top of everything. Definitely feels like it favors them. And of course, as this Azir gets more and more farm under his belt, he's only going to be scarier. Right now, he is just kind of an alt bot in a lot of these exchanges, but you can see already getting the Nashers. Have to respect the threat on objectives as well in any composition with the Azir, especially alongside a champion like the Viego. But Cloud ready to fight, ready to contest every objective. They don't have setup here, and they still want to step in. Mako, Abyssal Dive from mid lane, trying to get into the play a little bit faster. Redburn Loud find the setup. Hook onto Cream is big. Immediately everybody pushes their all buttons. For our assault hitting multiple people. Tien off to the side. For now, uncontested in terms of overall damage. Emperor's Divide not doing a whole heck of a lot, but Tien gets a reset. But instantly, Loud stops the play from getting any further. Redburn now taken down though. 369 gets here first, and that's what makes the difference. The fact that you had the push for 369 on top lane meant that they were always going to have that numbers advantage. And everyone dives in onto Cream, thinking they have the pick, but flash in from Mako saves them. So what was nearly loud picking up a win is top esports forcing them back. And you gotta say, this Tom Kench, such a nightmare for this team overall. They have to they have to get all their CC, they have to layer all their cooldowns, but if they layer too many, you can see here for Mako, bam, instantly saves the day. GJ for the TK. Great flash over the wall to keep these air alive. A crop ends up going down. But at this stage, you're, you've already got in, you've committed too much, so Redbird are going to fall as well. I think that's kind of the downside of a Nautilus, is once you're in the fight, you're in the fight. He's not really getting back out of it. And with the push on top, they're in a good spot. But now, Loud moving into the spot side again. Forcing this, though, is quite tricky. Mako's not here yet. He doesn't have the ult either. Mako's so about... Eh, Cannabis will dive in, but he's been spotted out by the ward, crucially. 369, Robo just continuing to trade blows. Thorn mail completed though, makes this pretty tough. Tien trying to move in, they have to be careful. Instant TP now coming out, they want to shred through Robo. Robo still standing for now, execution. Gonna come in for Tien, no Robo! Just barely makes it out, and that's everything, because it's Routes TP! It's the 80 carry TP, he might have taken it for a lane swap. But here, it's gonna save his top laner's life. 369 for now. Walking away, Mako there to cover. Five seconds on Routes ultimate, but he doesn't have the angle to use it. Robo should be able to reset though and make sure that he's in a great spot. So nice TP coming through from Root to set himself up. He's still going to be able to cover the mid push. Green will get some damage on the bot side, but Tin owns resetting, getting into position there as well. So you're able to cover most of your bases here as loud after getting that pick. Oh, Green. Again, kind of has flash. He's going to slide forward. Hook will connect. Flick back is big. Cream doesn't even manage to find time to flash, but Jackie Love is here. Tino's flashing over immediately. He needs one more auto. Just needs to finish this year off. The minions! The minions! My god, Cream! Again, he lives. First, it was the devour for Mako, but Tino's is not done. Round on the way in. Mako getting torn through TN next in line. He can't even take away the Nautilus loud. And the extended play managed to make it work, but this is psycho from Tino's! It doesn't work! Cream, the backstep is clutch! They spent so much TN. The resets, he can smell them, but he can't find the angle. He can't approach. It was a bloodbath in that bottom side. Tin owns falls, as does Mako and Cream, but we're still... Are we still going to go I wasn't sure how aggressive they wanted to go here, but still, control given over towards Loud. And Dragon going to be up now in 40 seconds. You're going to be able to get the reset and come back out into the map. Rift Herald is up and available, which is why we're seeing Redbird try and get some vision on this top side. I'm curious. Are they just going to give up Dragon for that Rift Herald? Look for the gold, look for towers? Rob, 
I don't know what we just saw, but I need more. I need more of this like a whale needs capsule skins, baby. But this is the thing, right? We talked about how Loud like to try and play on the map states. Well, the wave was pushed in or at least controlled by Root mid, so they send Redbird to the bot lane. The minions saving Cream here is clutch. It's just and then auto. you get the, the proc on the Seraph's embrace for Tin Owns as well, so he's able to continue to play across oh. enough to get the flick back, which kills Jackie Love. Then you it's Redbird for Mako and Trader supports, and then Tin Owns thinks he can make the play, tries to go further along the wall because he sees the soldier and just oh. barely cream steps forward to be able to get the auto attack that he needs to finish him off. Root there to get one back as well. Shutdown for the Vars yeah. looks good. I like that fist bump. This is a scrappy game. This is what I wanted though. Like, it's scrappy, but you can tell that there's thought behind why we're trying to play yeah. into these different positions. And it is just both teams trying to match and, I mean, fight it out, which is exactly what you want. Of course, the lane economy snapshot. Remember that it's not swapped up for the Tom Kench farming, but overall, still a very contentious game. Very small difference in terms of the overall goal, but it's TES who've been winning the day in objectives. Two dragons and six scrubs. Uh, means they have more opportunities to force fights on their terms and certainly can push harder. Loud or ever caught sleeping. Harold is up and Loud moving at least into mid lane for now. TP committed top side. Yeah, one to protect mid lane tower, one to try and kill Robo. Robo has get no him, to dash through, is a single dash enough? But could he pull pullback, nice bit of extra healing. Can't really afford to overstay here. All of Loud ready to collapse. Top esports had to commit Mako and Cream's TP, so Mako to mid, as Loud should just back away from this. TES though, the prize is the Herald. Does Robo want to TP back to try to contest? We've seen this from the Thaudi bar so many times though. Mid prio, very easy to take. That said, when he's on his lonesome, Mako and Jackie Love do have a little bit more license to step up and contest the wave. They have to be very careful, though. They know Robo has TP. They just don't know if he has TP to somewhere in the jungle onto some of these wards, especially even with the hex gates. But top esports, they got what they needed. They put the pressure on towards Robo with the TP. Cream sent him packing. They get Mako TP to mid to protect the mid tower. Now Redbird steps forward. Hot out, there's no wall, the hook. Redbird now retreating so incredibly low. Route needs to fire the ulti to disengage. Ulti from Senna coming over the top, but not quite enough to finish. Mako, he gets his away! Knocked back! Give Rev, baby, a Jackie Love pinata! Hand delivered to the CB Law! But Tien, here to take prizes of his own, he resets, he takes the body of Robo. And it is Cream and 369 who bring the fight back. Somehow, even with the bot lane getting caught, Top Esports for him to bring in enough damage to turn that fight around. It looked so good. The two for one special on the bot lane, but Top Esports are turning around. They nearly get the flick back onto Tin Owns, but Tien winning over the wall. He might have been able to take out the Tali as well. I mean, incredibly close game. It's a Herald, it's a 1k gold, it's two Drakes and the objectives. TES are absolutely cleaning house, but in the fights, it's a knife's edge for either side. Get look at it again. And it, look, Redbird gets the aftershock off the auto attack. I believe on Tomeko there, yeah, stops the, the uh, missile dive and manages to survive for a bit. This is great because it sets them off. But you can see his green starts to move forward. He's actually getting a ton of damage off with this wall, being separating them. Even gets the flick back as well, thanks to that Azir ultimate. And in that position, you're just caught for loud. They can't really get away. And they're able to follow on through with some good damage coming through from the top esports mid laner. We take a look back though, that fight was all cream. I think 369 TM, they both do a great job of, of cleaning up a little bit here and there. But right now, this is year is the problem that Loud are going to have to solve in the fights to come. Four, one, and four. Two items completed. Tenons has been good, but in those late game team fights, Azir is king. This is where it is going to start to get us a little. Tough for top. Okay, yeah. I think this is where if you can set up the Varus in mid lane is loud, you can start to work off of Croc and Root, especially as the level 11 is now hit for Croc. Put Hook, Burn, Hook connects. Ulti onto Jackie Love, though. Tino's here to follow up. Flick back onto Jackie Love. Mako this time. Has the Devour, takes him to safety. Good patience. 
Nice chunk out, but I don't really think there's anything else for Loud to get off of it. It's a massive swing and a miss for Loud. Although it looks almost good, you lose top tower. You now have no Talia wall, no Varus ult, no Nautilus ult, four Dragon that's about to spawn in 45 seconds, and you've lost full control on top, which means Cream gets the move and shift into mid lane. Now yeah. you don't have the numbers advantage you need, and top esports, they're going to look for yeah. more. Hook in on the Mako again, maybe not the ideal target this time. Redbird not tanky enough to survive. Croc now running. Tower set up. Knock up from Mako onto the Wukong oh, and the clone. Hook in. 369. Just going to keep going, and look what he found. It's on the side, he still had Ghost, he still had all, he didn't need to use it in the 1v1 and TES, dominating in mid lane. And it was just off that over force from Loud in the mid lane, Cream gets the rotate mid, and Loud are just too late to the play. Top esports, they're gonna set up Baron, and there's no way for Croco or Croc to get here. Luckily for them, it's Hexec Rift, so Redbird can get here pretty quickly, but it's 11 seconds. They don't have enough time. Robo, is he really going to go in? Is this where they want to bet their game? Hex flashed over the wall. Flick back onto Jackie Love is good, but Cream buys the space for the rest of the team, but he might just give away the shutdown. Ten Owens and Robo still standing. Redbird in the midst of the entire lineup. Mako going in. Ten Owens is the one that matters, though. He has the damage. TES tempering their aggression, backing away, not going to get lost in the moment. They give up the shutdown, but they take the Baron. Top Esports really just want to reset for Dragon. You got the pick on Redbird now, which means it is going to be a 4v4. Cream, if they can delay his Top Esports, can teleport into the play. So 369 immediately teleports onto that bot wave, get that pushed in. Someone has to respond on loud on that bot side. And with Mako tipping into mid lane as well, you've now got two waves of pressure for Top Esports that Loud have to deal with before they can approach the Dragon. And this is, I gotta say, this is delivering exactly what I wanted. I can't speak for the loud fans, <laughs> but this is, this hits, Rob. This is an exciting game. That said, TES are getting further and further ahead. And two Drakes and six Scrubs, you know, when the gold was even, when the kills were even, wasn't going to feel too bad. But now as that gold lead starts to get bigger and bigger, those objectives you didn't take early game are going to start to count more and more against you. But this is why it's been a great, it's been great to see the adaptation from top esports since we last saw them in the international stage in 2022. This is a team that still has some of those same players, but they look very, very different in how consistent they are, how tempered they are as they start to aggress onto the map. Loud have been taking shortcuts and trying to take risks that would catch out teams that aren't as tempered as them, where they end up getting caught on midway, where they end up getting caught in the enemy jungle. But top esports, they are slow and methodical. This is a new version of, especially players like Jackie Love, where they want to try and make sure that they're able to not give away the play, play off of their wave states. Like, look at this one. Top pushing on the top side with Cream. Now that unlocks Cream to try and play into mid, they push him bot, they're starting to group on mid, and they're just looking to choke Loud out of the game. This is the bread and butter the top esports brought from the LP. Playing through mid with the flash over the hook, the aggressive play from Redbird, the input buffer from TN though to go unstoppable. 369 gonna dash through, but still gonna get locked up by the rocks. It's a messy bit of a split fight. Croc dashing in, now finally gonna use that ultimate Mako cut off. TN still standing crucially, and it's 369 and Cream on the backside. Keep your eyes on that Azir when Cream goes in, but he doesn't have mana. He gets a little bit when the kill comes through though, and that can turn the fight in their favor. TES were already winning, but it's about to go from bad to worse for the side of Loud. Flick back is massive. Jackie Love taken down, but here comes Cream. And it doesn't matter, 369 finds the kill, the tier 2 will finally fall, but it's just a banger of a fight. It is, Loud throw everything at top, but again, Cream just over the wall, getting so much damage off, 7, 2, and 6 on this Azir, he is monstrous in this lane. Now it's starting to feel insurmountable, I like the aggressive look from Redbird, it starts off okay, but they can't Takes so many resources to finish up Tien. And look at that, I mean, you just see the gold you, in the individual roles. But again, it's out loud trying to engage, but the push is already there on the top side. Cream gets a ton of damage off into Robo as he's trying to come in, because Robo's just desperate to take the fight. And while we look at the rest of it, good ultimates coming through from 369, separates Root. So Root has to flash off the wall, but then when 369 continues over, Root has nowhere to go. Tin Owens is trying his best to be that main DPS, especially since Robo got taken out of the fight early thanks to the damage from Freeman and elsewhere. Oh. And then Jackie Love, it's a great flick back from Tin Owens. It does cause Jackie Love to fall, but it means Loud commit to the rest of the play then. And Top Esports are more than happy to go into the turret with the two damage dealers and, that they have. And honestly, watching that playback, that was all 369 and Cream. Just tag teaming the entire Loud lineup. Croc 
Now moving in, but getting shredded through. The set as well, and truly online. That's a reset for Tien. Now he gets to be the Wukong. Dashes in under Robo. A little bit extra healing. Dominus is going to do good work. Jackie Love going to get taken out. Robo's still living for a brief moment, but he's going to get the reset. He's going to turn to Renekton, and he's going to do whatever he damn well pleases. TES again. They're simply too far ahead. It was close earlier on. They're still able to get their licks in. They're still able to get kills back, but TES can just go for the throat here. They just take the inhibitor here if they want to. Prem is escorting the wave in on top side, so it's kind of 369 by himself. Maybe that's an opportunity for Loud, but you can see the rest of Talp Esports come back to help their boy as Kareem takes the top side. They're winning across the board, and Loud are desperately trying to find some way into this game. Tall task. I I mean, Wukong team fight is like the arguable scaling component in their favor, but with the Viego resets coming in, it's just so difficult. And you look at the opposite side, it's a Senna with 112 souls. An Azir with three and a half items in the luxury item of the Seeker's Arm Guard to, to go golden in the midst of a fight. And on top of all of that, there is a Tom Kent who will say no to any, any attempt you have to pick off a single target. It feels insurmountable. It it's Robo and Croc have to get access to Cream. Immediately set up for some sort of piercing arrow from Root to finish off Cream before any, not only Mako, but Jackie Love's ult comes through, a heal from Jackie Love comes through something, because this is here is monstrous alongside Tien. 7-4-7 seven, and seven on the Diego. He alone, once he starts to get resets in these fights, especially if it's Redbird, just sets himself up to be the carry after Cream goes yeah. down. And hopefully in the last fight, Loud, well, with that thought, Cream potentially caught out here. Ooh, minefield! Connects, Flip back does not. Redbird, though, hooking in. It does not work whatsoever. And now 369, free access, straight into Robo. Can go for the all-out if he wants to, but instead it's just going to back away here. Tanking tower shots left and right, but he's too damn tanky. Cancels the all-out to ensure he doesn't take any further damage. And TES just keeping the siege going. Redbird just missed time. The hook was hoping the wall would go down and maybe he could get onto Cream, but now, with these minions available, with six Void Grubs, that tower does not last very long. And it's on towards bot in here. Wait, back on Cream! Cream! But that's the luxury item, that's the purchase. They have to follow up flawlessly, they take Cream out. They buy themselves a bit more space. TES immediately back away. They know who's carrying. The fact that they got Cream means that they can hold on to that mid lane inhibitor, because that was an early bet to be two inhibitors down, and a very short waltz in towards the top side for top to make sure they could get the final inhibitor turret. But Dragon no is up. They're on a ward. Ooh, excellent, know where they are. excellent ward. Spots out the ambush. Loud need to be careful about approaching here. Tin owns the target that they have to protect. Jackie Love gonna hit the root, but only under Redbird. Rubber flash forward. He's gonna hit 369, but crucially, he's gonna hit Jackie Love as well. 369 devoured by Mako. Loud is here, ready to follow up. All deconnecting onto 369. Loud, ready to turn the fight. 369 backing away. Shut down. Crucial. Root happy to pick up the gold and the Drake, denying the soul for the side of TES. It's not a lot. It doesn't shift the gold lead massively, but it's another little thing in the favor of Loud keeping their hopes and dreams alive a little bit longer in this game. It buys them the time that they desperately need. No objective on the map apart from Baron makes it a little bit easier for them to just keep vision on that top side. Make sure top esports aren't doing anything sneaky, and they can start to keep these mid and bot waves off of their structures. Top, though, can very much start to play off of that mid inhibitor if they want to, or are they just going to start up this bar and see if they can get Loud out of their base? Loud TPing in. Now forced to back away. As the spell shield, Cream stepping very far forward. I, I think Loud could have punished there, but they just didn't have the necessary information. It would have been hard. Tin owns a lot to TP in, and he doesn't have any great TP wards available to him. So I think I respect the restraint from Loud there, not trying to go too far forward. Cream, though, oh, definitely low, no which is a big win. Yeah, they at least spot the pit. Double red ward, a little bit odd, uh, unfortunate there. A little bit of wasted vision, but happy to just deny the Baron for now. TP to the top side, coming in for Cream. Tinones has used his teleport. Won't be able to return to a side lane. TES, do they have the discipline to just play through side to wait for a greater advantage here? Robo will be forced to catch a side lane. Cream also using a TP though means it's overall even. Yeah, surprised to see the TP from Tinones. It felt rushed. Uh -oh. It felt Robo. like they thought they're under pressure. In no man's land, will be able to make it out in time. And I gotta say, this is this is tense, right? TES by all means favored. They still have all their flashes up. They have so many tools to protect Cream as their main source of damage, and the Baron's already been started. Loud know that they need to step up here, but they might just be walking face first into 369 and Mako. Now they're gonna realize Croc forced to back away. 369. Bit of damage on the clone, just trying to find access to the back line. T 
He has to pull off the Baron, though. That control ward, crucial. Gives Probably. them all the information they need. Robo just spotted on the control ward on top side, though. He was trying to see if he could get the flanks to top esports. Pull back, make sure there's no opportunity for the Renekton to get in onto their back line. The Probably. time bought by Tinones on the bot side is starting to go, as is Robo's time That's in this top one end. champion. You can't double dash through. Nice sidestep on a Mako. 369 has so many tools to interrupt with him. Robo thought he had access to the wave, but TES take their time with it. Flash out from Robo. Can he keep going? Cream coming over the wall. Pushing the mid lane is big from Loud, but it's not going to stop TES from taking the Baron. Double dash again from Robo. Waiting for now! Robo! Still alive. 369. Loud, is this your opportunity to turn back the fight, or can you at least reset? But now it's Redbird who's overextended. Pull back from 369 is good. Brings the knock up over the wall, but now it's Cream in trouble. Push back. Make a wall immediately to deny the follow up damage. And TES are stone cold. They don't waste a single cooldown. They don't overcommit. They got minions pushing into the bottom wave, ready to break the base. DS continue the march forward. Turn back to the Baron, knowing it's the safer prize. But my god, the discipline from this team is outstanding, Rob. They will get the Baron, but that was so rough for Loud. Robo survived for so long that I think if Loud were surprised, they had the plan of just going, we're going to run down mid. Buy as much time as possible. We're going to try and take the tier two. But then they're like, wait, this Renekton is still alive? You're actually going to be able to group with us? Okay, maybe we can do something. But I think that was a mistake. I think they should have just committed to Robo goes down. We try and get something elsewhere. But now top esports coming back into the map. Immediate TP for Mako in the mid to keep the pressure up. They want to make sure Loud cannot buy themselves the time and the top can get as much value out of this Baron as possible. One minute and 30 seconds. Until Soul is on the board, two and a half minutes on the Red Bull Baron power play. TES, you'd expect them to be able to end on this one. Again, Jackie Love's been quietly stacking up Souls the entire time. Cream didn't burn his flash, he still has his Zhonya's, and he still has the ulti of Mako up and available in just about 15 seconds. While lane inhibitor is about to respawn, that's the final super minion wave that's coming in. So top esports gonna go to meet us. Escort it in to make sure they'll get Redford, it. Redbird a little bit wide. It. Wall. Knock back under Cream is big. He goes gold. Mako crucially flashes over the wall. They need to layer their CC and they can kill the Azir. But Mako manages to get the devour out. Cream just starting to lay down damage. Tian in the back line trying to find the reset. Goes gold. Not goes gold. Gets the reset off the GA. All of Loud now retreating. The kill goes down. The body taken for Tian finds the Wukong. And this is going to be the end of game one. TES calm and composed. Loud. So many great angles but not enough to find the win. Shutdowns coming through. Tinone's still doing a lot of work, but TES can just hit the Nexus. No one can contest Cream. Fantastic game one. TES coming out on top. TES not overextending, not giving much to Loud. But Loud, they tried their damnedest. That was a fantastic game from the CD Law representatives. Really making sure that top esports were under pressure consistently. Working with Tin Owns to lean in towards bot side, to bring Redbird mid. They were throwing a lot of moves at top esports, but they didn't flinch. And top esports played disciplined in the fights and come out on top. I muted myself in those final moments. I've now unmuted myself. Excuse me. Honestly, Tin Owns, bro. These flickbacks, the We're confidence sick. in these plays. Yes, he fumbled one on the bottom side, but it was so good. This is a man who's been playing since 2013. He kaboomed our region before either of us were casting it, Rob, and now he's back. Doing this kind of performance against the LPL, that's what you love to see. Guys, Beast, this was such a sick game. And honestly, if I'm the CB LOL, I'm very happy with how we played loud. That was the fact that they were consistently getting the mid pressure for Tin Owns to then lean in towards bot side, to put pressure onto Jackie Love and Mako, to get a ton of these summoner spells out. You could see there was a very deliberate game plan, and it was just one or two points where they tried to make a gamble, where they tried to take that step to go, we can break top esports, but top esports were just prepared, taking one step back, making sure they were out of position, or, or out of position for whatever engage was coming through. But this, this was a close game. This was sick. Absolutely was. But you've heard enough from us about it. Let's head on over to the analyst desk to break down that game one. Welcome back to the desk. Laura's not feeling too well, so we'll wish her well. Yes, yeah, so we it's, love Laura. It's awesome. We love Laura. It's just we, us. We've taken over. <laughs> so Matt, <laughs> massive LPL bias on this desk now. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, TS had a little bit of a happy game. I feel like people are like, Emily, you said this team was smart. Yep. And they're reconsidering all of my opinions. Yeah, I think you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so explain the game to me. Talk about uh, it a little bit. So in, in TTS's defense, I will say they got all early objectives, yes. right? So like while, again, it was a very, very back and forth, 
you see when the game like absolutely blows wide open here uh, through the gold graph. And then I'd direct everyone's attention to objective control, right? Like the early game objective control from TES yeah. was very good. Uh, any opening that Loud gave them, they were able to get. And even with, I thought Loud played really well. They did. Um, especially in the early game, I could definitely see why people are like, this is the smartest team in CBLOL, right? They kept it very close. And also, to your point, Tin owns. Yeah. Man, his Tilia flicks are great. It's kind of it's nice. It's kind of <laughs> nice. To the point about the objectives you made, one Rift Herald, of course, all the Rift Heralds went towards top esports. Six scrubs yep. for top esports overall. A great amount of control for them. I actually really didn't like the draft from Loud in particular. I think you, you, the moment you see Senna, you recognize Senna Tom Kench is going to be a thing. You're going to Leah yep. and uh, Nautilus. It's, like, it's just going to be a really difficult fight, especially once the Azir comes through. And Jackie Love on Senna, right, going into this game, that is a staple pick for him. He is such a massive Senna player. He has a 78.6 win rate on it going Damn. into this series. And then as we see this fight that Loud actually started, uh, and it looks really good for them, and then we get a little bit too over-aggressive. Yeah, this is hilarious because Cream was just playing the line on that one. Uh, he was really close to dying throughout this, and Loud was just making it really, really competitive. Mm -hmm. Now, I love this one from Loud, the fact that they were like, you know what, we're going to chase them down. Cream Woo! plays this one out exceptionally, so it's kind of, it's a tough situation to be in because we're singing Cream's uh, praises for this fight, but this is a fight that they did lose in. Yeah, and I mean, I think looking at across the entire game, yeah. Cream was an absolute star, yes. right? Like he was such a massive damage dealer. Um, obviously Azir is a, a, kind of a signature pick of his. Yeah. Uh, at, once you get outside of the uh, assassin pool, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that he enjoys. So I think shout out to Kareem, his international debut, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it was a great one. Yeah, it was a great one. There were a lot of fights that Loud was taking the lead in. Yeah. Uh, he was getting really dicey in that fight up into the top side of the map, thanks to the reliable Cisco network. Kazante 369 comes in clutch and makes every second count. So talk me through this fight that happened in the top side of the map. Yeah, so obviously I'm a 369 enjoyer. And again, to your point, a lot of the times, Loud was, they think they can get a pick onto Redbert. Loud comes in, um, is, able to come back in, especially Tinones right here, right? Mm. Gets the flick onto Mako, and then here comes 369, and I did tell people, obviously Cream has a stellar performance in here too, but 369 comes in, is able to clean up this fight, and I did talk about 369's team fight targeting, right? And when he decides to come in, when he can TP in, um, and make the most of these fights, and it got, it did get to the point where once it got really happy, yeah. I thought 369 and Cream were the two standouts, so they're looking around, they're like, Guys, please, <laughs> please, especially Kareem, he's looking around, he's like, you guys have all done this before, what's going on, man? This should not be this hard. <laughs> Jackie Love's already thinking about that 2018 <laughs> IG games every time they had a much tougher, I remember IG going up against like Vici Gaming, I was yeah. like, guys, this should not be this hard of a game. But yes, they, they do end up cleaning it up. Of course, Loud does select blue side. Any yep. expectation from Loud changing things up going into the next game? So to your point about the team compositions, I think one of the reasons why we saw a lot of these team fights be like super messy mm -hmm. is that TES had a lot of answers yes. for everything they had in their composition, right? Like especially with the Nautilus into the Senna TK. Um, so I, I'd like to see them kind of draft again. They, I think they did draft around comfort. I'd like to see them focus on the Talia again. I think that was really good for Tinones. And we'll see going forward. Yeah, we will. And as we head to a break, take a moment to experience our host city, Chengdu. Thanks to our friends at Oppo.
Sport is the entertainment of the future. Nobody takes a title from G2. I'm doing something I've trained my whole life to do. Claim the ninth title. Find something you're good at, become a master at it, and then try to connect it to the esport world. Red Bull gives you wings.